Hello, and thank you for your interest in the loose ACLS dissertation fellowships in American art, which are offered by the American Council of Learned Societies, or ACLS. Our agenda includes a brief introduction to ACLS. We will then move into an overview of this program, including its goals and the core application components. Finally, we'll look over some tips for creating an effective application. Founded in 1919, ACLS is a small private nonprofit organization headquartered in New York City. We are a federation of 81 scholarly societies, including major disciplines of the humanities and interpretive social sciences. Organizations such as the MLA, APA, CAA, and AAA are our members, as well as many associations representing subdisciplines and interdisciplinary fields as well. I hope you will take a moment to go to our website to learn more about our membership. We are interested in being as broadly encompassing of humanistic inquiry as we can be, and to bring voices from various fields of humanistic studies to the table to help us set the agenda for the direction of humanistic research and inquiry. Our mission at ACLS is the advancement of humanistic studies in all fields of the humanities and social sciences, and the maintenance and strengthening of the national societies dedicated to those studies. One way we do that is by working with learned societies to think about issues of shared concern and to come up with ways to address those issues and support scholars broadly at a variety of institutions. At ACLS, we also provide direct support for research through fellowships and grants, and we offer multiple programs in any given year. I encourage you to take a look at our full roster of offerings throughout the year as we are often adding new programs. We'll be supporting nearly 400 fellows over the course of this competition year, and those fellows will be selected from between 3,000 to 4,000 applications across all of our programs. Each year, we work with between 600 and 700 peer reviewers to help us select our fellows and grantees, and those peer reviewers also provide feedback to all applications. Even if an applicant may not be able to win a fellowship in a given year, they can receive feedback to improve not just their project, but also their proposals. This year, we'll be offering up to seven loose ACLS dissertation fellowships, and those awards consist of a $42,000 package of stipends. That's a $38,000 stipend for the academic year with up to $4,000 in research funds. These funds are intended for travel to collections, field work, or other research-related costs. The tenure of the award is an academic year or equivalent to be held for any continuous period of nine to 12 months between July 2025 and May 2027. In addition to the monetary support that this fellowship provides, we will provide some professional development opportunities, including webinars and workshops, as well as opportunities for networking among members of the fellow community but also more broadly across ACLS's community of scholars, alumni, and reviewers. Our full eligibility criteria are listed on our website. And I strongly encourage all of you to view our competition page where the eligibility criteria are outlined. What you see here is an abbreviated version, but I wanna stress that the full eligibility criteria are best read on our website. Applicants must be a PhD candidate at a university in the United States in art history or a related field, such as Native American and, and Indigenous Studies, Ethnic Studies, or African American Studies. Students preparing theses for the Master of Fine Arts degree are not eligible. You must have a dissertation focused on a topic in the history of the visual arts of the United States, including all facets of Native American art. Projects should be focused foremost on the art object and or image and employ an art historical or visual studies approach. You must have completed all requirements for the PhD except the dissertation before beginning fellowship tenure. You cannot previ have previously applied for this fellowship more than once. And you must be a US citizen, permanent resident, indigenous person residing in the United States through the rights associated with the Jay Treaty of 1794 a DACA recipient, asylee, refugee, or individual granted temporary protected status in the United States. 
This program seeks to promote innovative scholarship and cultivate new leaders by promoting early career American art scholars in a critical moment in their careers. I'm going to briefly go through the application or review process, but before we jump in, I'd like to emphasize that grant writing is a skill that improves with practice and grant writing is distinct from academic writing or scholarly writing. The first components of the application are fairly straightforward informational sections, asking for your name, address, educational background, and employment information. These sections are what we call the common profile, which creates a profile for you with some basic information that carries over to another application if you apply for more than one ACLS fellowship in one year. The next section of the application includes loose ACLS fellowship specific questions, which ask how long you've been in your program and some optional demographic questions. You'll also be asked to provide a title for your project, an abstract, which should be a brief description of the project and the broader implications of your research for both the field of art history and that of American art. That page with your title and abstract is the first page that reviewers see. It's the first impression that you'll be making. Your proposal can be no longer than eight pages in 11 point or Arial or Helvetica font, inclusive of all images and any footnotes or endnotes. You are required to provide at least three images related to your project. When describing your project, be sure to describe both the nature and scope of your project, the various approaches or methodologies used, and the significance of this work within your specific and general fields. Be sure to provide a brief statement on progress already made and a tentative schedule of work to be accomplished during the grant period. The annotated bibliography should be no more than four pages double-spaced in Arial or Helvetica 11-point font, containing 10 key secondary sources for your project. The annotated bibliography is meant to provide an overview of the most important resources used to shape your project. For each reference, please provide a brief description, two to four sentences, of the source and its relevance to your project. Primary sources should be listed separately without annotation at the beginning or end of the annotated list of secondary sources. You may include an optional publication list of up to two pages in Arial or Helvetica 11 point font of publications, exhibitions, presentations, and scholarly or university service. You must include two reference letters, one of which must come from your dissertation advisor. You will also include a statement from your institution, preferably from your department chair, director of graduate studies, or dean. And now some tips that we hope will be helpful as you complete the application. Please do read our website early and often. That early login is really important because that is where you're going to designate your reference letter writers and the person who's going to be providing your institutional statement. Please register, sign in, and put in the name of the referee and their email contact address so that ACLS can send them an email requesting the reference letter or institutional statement. You wanna be as kind as possible considering they're getting many of these requests around this time and to give them the lead time to respond and be able to write a strong letter. Given the number of components of the application, it can be helpful to create a checklist of application components and a timeline for completing them. It is important to match your goals and plans to the program objectives. You don't need to restate the program's objectives in your proposal, but a reviewer should be able to clearly see how the goals of the program are being advanced by the work that you propose. It is essential to spend time on your abstract, which should be a brief description of the project and the research you will pursue. This is a piece of writing that should be additive and not duplicative of any text in your proposal. So please do not cut and paste the first paragraph of your proposal and put it in the abstract page. That is a major pet peeve of our peer reviewers. I've heard many times from reviewers who are well aware that you only have so much space available to you and are aggravated on your behalf when you can't use that limited real estate as effectively as possible. Please use every square inch of the proposal to your best advantage. Every piece of the application counts 
if we're asking for it, it's going to be a part of the review process. Give us your argument and not just a description. We want to not just get a sense of where your project sits within the field, but the reviewer should have a great sense of the stakes of your work. I think it's important for people to think about the dialogue they're engaging in with peer reviewers. And remember that whether you're successful or not, you will be eligible to receive feedback on your application. It's very important to be clear and avoid jargon. Certainly jargon has its own use as technical language within a particular field or subfield, but it can be alienating for people who are outside of that culture of usage of that particular technical term. You will wanna make sure that at every stage you're bringing your reader along and not alienating them. Please do consider whether a piece of jargon or a technical term is absolutely necessary in putting together your proposal or making your argument. If there are any significant terms that you feel are absolutely necessary, you should make sure to define them early on in your proposal. You really want to make sure that no one misunderstands how you are using a term and what it means in the context of your project. If possible, ask a friend or colleague to read a draft in advance. It is also really important to share your proposal with your reference letter writers so that they can best put together a reference letter to complement and not duplicate anything you're saying in your proposal. This is a great courtesy that you can offer your letter writers. If you can provide a draft for them, that can be helpful in putting together the most cohesive application package. Don't understate your accomplishments. We want to see what you've done thus far in your career. And finally, it's really important to remember the deadline. The application deadline is October 30th, 2024, 9 p.m. Eastern. Please do mark that when you're putting together your checklist of application materials and make sure you're working backward as carefully as possible to ensure that you have everything in by that time. We cannot offer extensions on the application deadline given the compressed schedule we have for peer review. Thanks again for watching this webinar and if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to email fellowships at acls.org. Good luck.